Good day everyone, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Classroom Professor. Welcome to video number 42 in the free math worksheet series. In this video I'm going to talk about adding fractions with like denominators. So this uh, video and the set of worksheets come with the software which is part of our Classroom Professor gadgets and it's a piece of software called Fraction Addition and Subtraction. So Obviously adding and subtracting fractions is a huge topic and we won't cover the whole uh, gamut of the topic in this video but let's just talk about adding fractions with like denominators. The first thing to say is that obviously students need to be thoroughly familiar with what fractions are and how they're represented and how they're uh, read and how they're uh, discussed and spoken about and so on. So these models of course are based on this circle being the whole. It's most important that our students can always tell what the whole shape is. It's always a fraction of a whole. Just as if someone said you know some such and such has gone up by 25 percent we would want to know what the 100 percent was otherwise the 25 percent makes no sense. In the same way when we're doing any sort of fraction work we need to refer back to what is the whole amount uh, so we can say how many pieces there are and so on. So here are some fraction pieces with different denominators. Obviously we have six quarters and eighths and we could show our students um, when we get to the topic that it would be very difficult to add those two fractions together. Obviously there are ways that we can do it but just looking at that without a, a lot of extra information adding a sixth and a quarter is pretty well impossible when you're just a beginner with fractions. So we're not going to be doing that we're going to be adding fractions where the denominators are the same. So let me remove that and let's look at a question now we're not going to do any regrouping in this question so we won't go, go beyond one so we'll keep the numbers nice and small. Let's say one sixth plus four sixths. Now it's not difficult to see that for a student who doesn't understand fractions they might assume that the answer to this question is going to be five twelfths or as some students would say five over twelve because if they're used to addition which of course they will be by this age 1 plus 4 is 5, 6 and 6 is 12 that must be the answer. It's really important that students understand the difference between the two numbers in any common fraction the numerator and the denominator and at this point it's worth pointing out what a denominator actually is. If we think of the word denomination or nominating or something that is nominal all of those words are about a name um, and that's what the denominator in a fraction does that's its purpose is to name the fraction to put it slightly differently it tells you what sort of fraction it is it effectively tells you how big the fraction is it doesn't tell you how many of them that you've got but it tells you how big each one is so in this case where we see sixths it's this size and in this set of resources the only ones that are orange are sixths so it's these fractions and that's how big they are compared to the whole circle and so the purpose of the denominator is merely to do that it's to say how big is it based on of course the number of equal pieces that are in the whole so that's what we mean by a sixth I should get rid of that so we need to help our students understand that the number of pieces that we're adding is what's important. In a situation where we've already established the denominators are the same we need to look at the other part. So there's our one-sixth. Let me remove this as well. And here is four-sixths. And we're going to add the two together. Quite obviously the sixths all belong together. They're all sixths and so we get a new fraction and it's five pieces and each one is a sixth. So seeing the correct answer is not that difficult once you see it using the materials. We need to move our students beyond the materials ultimately but at this point where we're introducing the idea the materials whether it's a physical one like this or pictures or diagrams or you know on the worksheets there are pictures and on the software there are, there are pictures um, 
those supports are very important for students so that they can see what they're doing and understand what they're doing. Really, we should let them keep using these um, supporting resources as long as they need to until they understand it. And, and when they're ready for just the symbols on their own, then, then and only then should we um, remove the materials. Um, let's look at another example. And I'm going to use a different layout this time. So I'm going to show you an alternative. Uh, this time we're going to use eighths. So let's add three eighths and two eighths. So here's three eighths. And here's two eighths. And we're going to combine the two. Quite obviously, again, we can see they're all called eighths, so we're allowed to add them together. What sort of fraction will we have when we add those together? Clearly there will be eighths as well. The only remaining question is how many are there? We can see three here and two there, so it must be five eighths altogether. So again with the materials it's not that difficult at all. Let me just talk briefly about the vertical layout. Many of us, myself included, learn to add fractions horizontally. And there's a certain logic to that that you can see the numerators you know, in a line horizontally and then you can see the denominators underneath. In this example it's a little bit harder to see these are denominators and these, sorry, these are numerators and these are denominators. This layout, this um, alternative algorithm really comes into its own where there's regrouping. So if we had more than eight eighths, if we were doing a regrouping example, then we would be able to say, okay, we've got more than eight eighths, what can we do with that extra one? Well, let's make a hole and move that hole into the whole column. And then this algorithm mimics a whole number algorithm or a decimal fraction algorithm. Okay, but to get back to the main topic, adding fractions with like denominators is not terribly difficult once the students understand what denominators are and how they work and they know that they're just adding the numerators. So that's it for this week. Hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you next time.